This study is very important for a number of reasons. First of all, hypertension affects about a quarter of Canadians. And of those, about 30% of those are uncontrolled. So when you have that kind of a scenario where you have a high prevalence disease that results in a lot of downstream costs and the opportunity for pharmacists to impact on a disease such as that, we have a perfect situation for pharmacists to make a real difference in the care of patients. Hypertension is the single most important risk factor for premature morbidity and mortality. So it's, it's extremely important uh, right across the world, not just in the developed countries. So the full scope of pharmacist care and the role of treating hypertension means that they actually assess the patient, they counsel the patient, they do regular monitoring of blood pressure, they titrate doses of medications, they prescribe, they order laboratory tests, and they really follow up with the patient at regular intervals to make sure that outcomes are achieved. The model is a mathematical model. It's based upon a couple of very important inputs. There is a meta-analysis that models the partial scope of practice, which showed a reduction in systolic blood pressure. There's a randomized controlled trial that was done in Alberta by Suyuki et al., and that shows an 18.3 millimeter reduction in systolic blood pressure. There are over 40 randomized controlled trials of pharmacists taking care of patients with high blood pressure. There are actually very few things that have that much research evidence uh, for benefit. And uh, right across the board, what it shows is that pharmacists taking care of patients with high blood pressure is beneficial. What the model does is it translates those reductions in blood pressure into reductions in events using very good epidemiological evidence. If we were to apply these results to the Canadian population that is eligible for this, what we would see is a significant reduction in heart attacks, strokes, angina or chest pain, and chronic kidney disease. The impacts clinically are highly relevant to our healthcare system. It is the only area where we have really, really solid evidence of using any healthcare provider around the economic benefits that are accrued over time. The study shows that not only is pharmacist care for hypertension better than usual care, it also shows that on a societal perspective, it is cheaper in the long run. The intervention obviously costs some money. You have to remunerate pharmacists to be doing the intervention. And there will be more costs associated with medications when you use the strategy. However, the reductions in cardiovascular disease and the reductions in kidney disease and the care that's associated with both of those more than offsets those increase in expenditures. At the population level, for people who are eligible for this kind of care, it translates into a saving of $15.7 billion over 30 years. From one province to another, there might be some small differences in how pharmacists are reimbursed. So given that, we developed an interactive tool so that people can access the model on their own. So that's available publicly on the internet and you can go there, you can play with it, you can see the assumptions we use and how we arrived at our results and you can see what the results would look like if you make a different set of assumptions. Pharmacists are ideally placed to address the care gap in hypertension because they are seen more often than any other healthcare practitioner in the community. So pharmacists are seen about five to seven times more often than their primary care physicians are by patients. And the other reason is that pharmacists are already in place. They're already there. The infrastructure is in place for them to be doing this type of intervention on patients. The only thing that needs to be put in place is appropriate remuneration such that they can operationalize uh, this intervention.